Hello everybody and welcome back to Survival Preparedness for Beginners and today we're going to do a video on a lot of requests that I have received and people wanting to know what are the top things that they need to be looking for or maybe looking to purchase at this point in time that every prepper should have or every beginning prepper should know so that they can have the knowledge and start gaining the knowledge on these items so that they can be prepared. So we're going to start right off. So this is the top five things every prepper should have in their toolbox, in their home, at any given point in time. Now these are in no particular order, but these are my top things that I think that you all should be looking to purchase or buy and put it into your toolbox. Number one, a dehydrator. You can dehydrate so many things. And I would suggest, you know, don't go real cheap. If you don't have a lot of money, you don't have to go real expensive either. You can get one like the one I have that I've done my dehydration videos on. It works perfect. It has all the different trays. I show you the tricks that I use to avoid having to buy all the trays to put in there uh, as far as so if you're doing say like mixed vegetables or something that's going to dehydrate down real small and fall through you got to avoid that and I show you a, a trick to that you can go back and watch that in my dehydration videos but I mean having a dehydrator and being able to dehydrate your fruits, your vegetables, your meats, and all those different types of things is a very big bonus to have just having one of those pieces of equipment in your home. Number two, a vacuum sealer. Vacuum sealer is a very great tool to have in your toolbox because you can vacuum seal a lot of your dry goods. You can also vacuum seal your rice your dehydrated products, you can vacuum seal all that type of stuff. Not to mention, if you find a good deal at the store on meats, if you bring those meats home and you have the freezer space, if you vacuum seal those, they're going to last you for over a year in your freezer. I do it with everything. When I see something on sale, we buy it and I bring it home. I'll vacuum seal it. I date it and put it in the freezer. And the stuff is just as fresh as if you just bought it. They are a wonderful piece of equipment. Now, I would spend the money and buy a good vacuum sealer. One that has like all the different attachments where you can have like the jars, like the one that I have that I show in a lot of my videos. So you can vacuum seal jars and bags. And if you wish, you could always buy, they do make different types of plastic products that you can put things in and vacuum seal that also. So it's just another great piece of equipment to have in your toolbox. Number three, this is something that I don't have. I do have canning jars because I use those with... Uh, my vacuum sealer to vacuum seal a lot of different products, but having all the canning stuff that you need, as far as a canner, um, all the different attachments that you need to do canning and everything else and learning that, it's just one thing that I do not do. It's, um, it's very time consuming, can be, and I don't have a lot of time. I work all week long. And come the weekends, I'm shooting videos. So I don't have a lot of time to get involved with the canning part of it. Maybe down the road, I will. Uh, a lot of people in my family has been doing it their whole lives. My mom, my grandmother, I mean, everybody on my mother's side, they were, they've been canning their whole lives. So it's not that I don't understand or I know how to do it. It's I don't have time to do it. But having those products... So that you could do it in case of something happened where you had to grow your own food and try to preserve it throughout the winter time, just like they did back in the day, is a great bonus. Number four, 
Mylar bags and oxygen absorbers. Mylar bags are very important. Now, with your Mylar bags, you have to have the oxygen absorbers. So if you're storing all your dry goods and stuff in there, there are certain things you don't have to have put an oxygen absorber in. You can go back and watch some of my videos and I get into all that. But having Mylar bags with the oxygen absorbers is very key. You can store a lot of different types of products in those Mylar bags and they block out the light so that no light can get to the product. Unlike if you use canning jars or a vacuum sealed bag, you have to make sure you store those products in a dark area. Whereas if you're using Mylar, you don't have to. You can just store it on a shelf in a cool, dry place. They sell in different thickness. The thicker, the better. Remember that. All right. Oxygen absorbers, they come in all different sizes. It all depends on what you're looking to do. You can always go back and check out some of my videos where I explain all that to you. But have your Mylar bags that you want to have so that you can put food and stuff up. Now, you don't have to buy a Mylar bag sealer. It makes things very easy. But if you're on a tight budget, all you need is an iron. And I've done videos on that also to show you exactly how to do it. Because that's how I do mine. Number five. I think number five should be portable gas stove, as in a Coleman stove or whichever type of stove that you can afford, at least a two burner propane type stove. So this way here, if the power goes out, the food and stuff that you have put up and have spent your time and your money and everything else on in an emergency type situation, a disaster, SHTF type situation, you are prepared to be able to cook for your family if you're on a electric stove type scenario. Now, if you have a gas stove, as long as they don't turn your gas off, you'll be fine. But if you have an electric stove, once the power goes out, you're done. So having a portable gas stove is very critical for you and your family to survive. And as an extra bonus here, you want to make sure that you do have any and all extra things that you do need to operate or to use with anything that was in this list. So that means you would need extra gas, extra oxygen absorbers, extra Mylar bags, all your different types of canning equipment and things, uh, especially all the different sized jars, lids, uh, rings, all that kind of stuff. You want to make sure you do have extra of those with your vacuum sealer. You want to make sure that you do have extra vacuum sealed bags. Your dehydrator is pretty much, it's pretty much on its own. As Once you do the trick that I did, it, it, you're done. You don't have to worry about it anymore. Uh, there's really not much to it. You just put the product in there and dehydrate it, wash it up, and it's good to go for the next time. There's nothing really more to buy with a dehydrator unless you wanted to buy a couple extra trays. That'd be the only thing that you may want to look into purchasing. If your say only came with four, you may be able to buy a couple more so you could have six and then still run your dehydrator and everything else. But I mean, that's just, uh, that's not like with everything else where you have to have all the extra things to go with it. So I'm Survival Preparedness Beginners. Thank you for joining me on this video today. I hope this answered a lot of people's questions out there that I've been getting on the top five things I think every new prepper should have in their pantry, in their toolbox. Because these five things are very, very important to putting up food so that you and your family will survive. So until next time, folks, you all stay safe, you keep prepping, and remember, you got to thrive to survive. Now I'll catch you all on the flip side.